call the meeting to order this evening. If we'll all stand and join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. <laughs> Tonight's invocation will be by Pastor Anna Teal of the Bella Vista Community Church. Pastor. Let's pray. Lord, we are grateful for this beautiful day and the opportunity that you give us to enjoy it. We pray for your blessings now over the POA board as they meet, and we thank you for the many gifts that you give to us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Seated. Does any board member have any additions or deletions to the agenda? Being none, I'll ask for or entertain a motion to approve the minutes. Um, tonight we have two proxies. Uh, Joshua Hart's proxy is held by Director Nuttall and uh, our uh, Vice Chair Brad uh, Morris' uh, proxy is held by uh, Director uh, Hatcher. I move we approve the minutes as submitted. Second. Discussion? All those in favor of approval of the minutes, signify by raising your hand. Motion carries unanimously. We'll now turn the uh, microphone over to Dwayne Mitchell, our treasurer for the financial report. This will be the income statement. First, the POA without the water. Year to date, March 2016, and these are in thousands of dollars. <clears throat> Come on, baby. Uh, looking at the top line of assessments, we've seen this trend all year. Uh, assessments are down 201,000, and part of that is going to be talked about tonight when we talk about helping out, maybe getting some people turned off on water faster to collect some of the assessments. So that would uh, be a tool and a hammer that we don't have right now. Uh, golf and pro shop, uh, year to date against budget, 39,000 less than budget, which you've seen before the variances were really large up until March, and now the variances are kind of settling down. But 39,000 against budget and 2,000 against, and you can see what some of the, the items are. Now, this is against budget. We'll show you against prior years in just a minute, but this is against budget. Cart rentals are down 26, annual seat lease is 53, uh, private cart 52. Annual greens fees continue to be above budget, 166. Uh, guest down 49 and member down 25. That's one of the lowest. Usually a member is a lot bigger than that, so that's, that's really a good number there. Uh, but this is just through March. <clears throat> Looking at uh, some more details, this is the annual greens fees and comparing 2014, 2015, and 2016. And for comparison's sake, we're including the annual uh, uh, golf value card because we had it in these two years, but we don't have it in this. But for comparable, we need to kind of include it. But if you look at 2014, 330,000 revenue. 2015, 546. But look, 2016, 631. You can see that. But it also needs to be noted that the end, or the uh, value card a cart was tied to that. Okay. And so that's probably some of the reason when it went to annual, yes. then the other was gone. That's, that, that's true. Uh, the next one is the annual seat lease, and that's kind of what you're talking about here. Uh, you can see the 360, 404, 396. And you can see the primary, secondary, and you can see the monthly, how that is, because we've never had monthly until this year on some of these, and so that's why there's nothing in comparable years. Uh, the private cart registration, you see the same trend, and that one actually is less. For probably some of the reason. Uh, RV Park. RV Park uh, income, which includes RV Park and RV Storage, is better than budget by nine. The park is better by 13, and RV Storage is down by four. And here's the actual revenue where you can kind of see against prior years, not against budget, but against prior years. So you can see we are making headway, even though budget doesn't really show that. Budget may be a little too aggressive. Uh, facility use fees, 24 better than budget, and uh, facility use fees, photo IDs four, for a total of 28 better than budget on this line right here. And again, the detail uh, there. Photo IDs, you can see it's increasing. You can see the, the non-resident last year at this time, 413, this year 399. Not that, not that much difference. 
uh, but you can see it is more revenue each year, even though we've budgeted maybe different and thinking we're going to get just a little more. Uh, boat registrations, they're down 39 and docks down 10 for an overall of 49 against budget. And here's how the boat registrations look. 154, 182, 190. You can see the size and type against years, which look very, looks very favorable to me. Uh, revenue dock fees, the same thing, very, very close, 57, 56. Uh, investments, we're seeing a turnaround here. We've got some improvement in our market in the investments, and now we're positive. We're positive 198 year to date. We have been negative, and that's really just due to market correction. Lot sales, lot sales are down, uh, mainly because the legal has not been uh, really doing a lot of lot sales. I know we're going to start doing more of that, and we're down 18 year to date against the budget. Transfer fees, we see that trend uh, kind of down too, but it's a little better than it was last month. It's 36 below budget year to date. Other income, sales tire commissions are higher than budget by 10. And advertising, we're seeing advertising because we've had a lot of advertising that's just not happening. It's 46,000 down for overall other income is down 36,000. Total income, therefore, on this statement, this is the POA without water. It's 150 less than budget for the same reason you can see above. Uh, cost of sales. Cost of sales is interesting because we had the Golf Expo right there. We've had the Golf Expo, and we've actually uh, sold a lot of items below cost just to get them out of the pro shop. So Golf Expo uh, did kind of a number to our uh, cost of sales, but we're 15000 higher than budget, mainly just because of the selling below cost on some stuff to, to turn it and get it out. Uh, gross profit is 165000 less than budget, again, for the, the same reasons you've seen above. Moving down to the expense section, salaries and wages, we've seen this trend all year, and it's below budget, 226000 You can see for these, these are the bigger items, golf maintenance, open positions, 27, open positions in flood and golf operations. We just didn't have the people uh, there because we just didn't need them to sell. Uh, MAC open positions, 18. We've got some uh, workers in MAC. Uh, uh, F&A open positions, the legal and the, the IT guy was hired late. Delayed uh, adjustments to the employees, 62000 based against budget. And the others are just very vacancies, hours across the division. Yes? <laughs> the delay adjustments, we put in a 4% increase overall in the, in the employee's adjustment. It was put in effective January, but it's not going to be paid out until sometime later this month or first part of May. And so we're tracking that just because that's part of the budget right now. But these are actual variances that you're, you're seeing. Uh, benefits, uh, same way, we're 52000 better than budget in this section. This is the POA, due to health insurance and payroll taxes. Some of that's due to vacancies. Some of that's just due that we haven't had a lot of claims. Um, whoa, too much. Outside contracts is better than budget by 38. Uh, software support savings so far year to date, and some contract labor that we budgeted that we haven't spent. <clears throat> Professional services is higher than budget by 12. Uh, for outside legal, and then also there's an economic development study that we split with the city as part of this number. Postage, we see member communications and publication mailings. Some of the mailings of our the, the big publication that we're sending out is part of this variance here, but it's 17,000 better than budget. Higher than budget, excuse me, higher over budget. <clears throat> Total expenses are 374, again, for the same reasons you've seen before. We are 374 better than budget. Looking down to net income, we're 219 better than budget for the same reason, mainly the savings on the expenses. Totally is all paid off. With all the capital project has been closed. We have ongoing uh, issues that we're, we're paying just as we go, and it'll hit the books as far as professional services or contract services. Uh, capital projects is a little higher than budget, 13. That's kind of due to that Metfield project where we put in the extra floor and just had some other expenses that were added to that project. Uh, simple cash flow on this one, we're 281000 better than budget in the POA by the end of March. Looking at the same numbers in water, uh, investment income, you can see a spike here also, again, for the same reason, the market adjustment, 83000 better than budget. Uh, water, uh, the new connections are favorable, 11, transfer fees, water sales are even up better than budget, 38. One thing down, disconnect, small amount, but 49000 better than budget for these reasons. Uh, other income, water capital buying fee and miscellaneous, those are like the, uh, the, 
the fees that we charge when you don't pay your bill on time, that's what that miscellaneous usually is. And that's 26,000 better than budget. Uh, total income on water is 158 better than budget, mainly because you can see the, the 83 and the 49. Um, cost of sales, we've seen, and go back here. Sorry about that. Cost of sales year to date are 37.1. We've seen a little spike in our cost of sales this year. And the budget was 33.9 through this, this uh, quarter. Uh, we've seen some large leaks, and that's attributed to some of this. We thought some of it would be timing as far as where the bill is and when we read, but it looks like a lot of it's going to be due to some large leaks we've had at the first quarter of the year. We had about 30 to 50,000 estimated damage on water. We're going to get some of that back through the FEMA money, and I don't know that we've gotten all that back yet, but I don't think it's hit my reserves yet, so I don't think it's hit the, the bank yet. Uh, gross profit on water there is 98,000 better than budget. Okay, that's where I want to go. Salaries and wages, you see, again, they're better than budget by 36. We do have some vacancies still in water and also delayed adjustments also on the water side. Uh, the way that the benefits work, some of it is higher than the budget on the water side. is about 16,000. That's just due to the, if they're single or married or how, the, how that's working and also claims, how the claims are allocated. But still, our claims are very low for this year, year to date. Uh, membership training and travel, we see that 7,000 higher than budget, mainly because we relocated our water engineer uh, when he came here the first year. Uh, total expenses on water are less than budget by 20,000. Uh, income is better than budget by 127,000. Uh, and capital flow, when you add depreciation effect, we're 118,000 better than budget in the water utility. Any other questions for Dwayne? Thank you, Dwayne. Response to previous open forum comments, there were no open forum comments in our last uh, meeting. Open forum. Anyone that would like to address our group tonight, please uh, move to the podium, state your name and address, and visit with us. Good evening. My name is Dick Rooney. I don't know any of you uh, gentlemen that are serving on the board. I appreciate that. I do know Ruth, only because she's been here probably longer than I was. I served some six years on the city council here in Bella Vista, and I can tell you, I know what a thankless job that you have. And I do want to thank you for willing to serve on there. And also, I wish to thank you for considering the Loch Lomond Dam. I, as past president of Fly Tires Club, I think it's a very important thing for not only the young families here to take their children down to fish, but it's older people too that uh, are unable to get out in the boat anymore. And, and I want to thank you for considering this. Thank you. I live at number, Dick Rooney, excuse me, and I live at number 10 Thursby Lane. Okay. Thank you, Dick. Hi, my name is Linda Lloyd. I live at 102 Fairway Drive, and I'm here to speak about the Arkmo land issue. As a longtime real estate broker, developer, and appraiser, first I want to mention that the existing appraisal you guys have is wildly optimistic. Um, I've been trying for several years to develop land in Bella Vista, and I've looked at a number of parcels, and I'm unable to figure out how to even break even paying more than four grand an acre. So I don't know how they got that appraisal value. Um, as to the current offer, I would like to suggest that you all take that for a variety of reasons. And sure, there's land that I sold that I wish I hadn't, but I think you have to look at what the current situation is. And in past years, there have been issues with a lot of the members of the POA feeling that the board was acting fiscally irresponsible. Whether that was true or not, that was the impression with a lot of people, and I think that led to people voting down <coughs> assessment increases. And I think the PR value of turning down the current offer and then potentially going out next year asking for an assessment increase would be very negative. I think accepting the current offer would put you in very good standing with a lot of the members because they would see that you're looking for other sources of income. Thank you. 
Thank you, Linda. Steve McKee, three Tyree Place. That was everybody. Also want to support uh, the idea of selling the land. I think it's a great idea. I think that the, uh, I don't see any downside. I think at the last meeting someone mentioned, well, we might want to do a golf course. Uh, do you know what it costs to do, put in an 18-hole golf course? About how much? About four million? According to the PGA or the USGA, two to four million, plus the structures, plus you have to maintain it annually. So basically, we'd have another half a million or so going out the door, uh, probably some cannibalization of the other six courses that we've got. So I suggest, uh, along with other people, that uh, it's a great idea to, to, uh, to take the offer. I think, uh, Horse farm would be uh, beautiful out there. Um, on another issue, I had sent a couple of emails over the last couple of months, really, and had a question again on the balance sheet. I see you've got your investment summary. On the balance sheet, it shows about a million four more than what that investment summary shows. That's the, correct. The P the P and L numbers hook up. So, and I think you mentioned that we have maybe 20,000 or so floating around as far as, you know, change when someone takes a golf cart or whatever. So do we really have like a million four sitting in, There's still again, under the base, under the... That's act? still sitting in the checking account, correct, for operations. We have operation cash and we have investment. <coughs> so you mentioned the last time that there was maybe another couple hundred dollars of interest Oh, just, yeah, between, sometimes those, they get kind of hairy between those. Between so they sort of move around yeah. from Arvest 1 to Arvest 7? Yeah. Okay. So is there, is there any uh, reason you just don't list it as well, part of this investment summary? What I'm listing is investment cash. summary, but not cash in related. We're, list, we're listing investments versus operating cash. The, uh, the water is listed, and I think it's all cash and short term, it's, which well, brings it's, up another question. It's both short term and long term on this statement. On, on water? Yes, on the March statement. The March balance sheet. Well, that's sheet been re reallocated because I think in January it was all cash and After, after cash. the audit, we did reallocate it. That's correct. Because okay. that was the other question was how in the world does cash lose a couple thousand dollars? Yes. Right. Um, on another issue for the charity, uh, Mr. McCash is back, so maybe he directed you. Is there some declaration or policy that shows we should be getting into that area? I mean, as near as I can tell, the declaration says something about maintain and improve amenities. Correct, yeah. So, Security is not really an amenity. I mean, the, I don't, I don't, the bylaws give the or the authority to set up um, set up committees, and whether it's a golf committee or a lakes committee or you know recreation committee, this is the same type of deal. So just like it doesn't just really like matter. The declaration what... doesn't give you the authority to set up a, a lakes committee. The bylaws do give you that authority. It does, does, does give the board that authority. But of course, the lakes we have seven lakes, or we have a golf committee, and we've got golf courses. And that would help improve and then maintain the amenities. I think we're all for charities. That's not the issue. It's just exactly where does that fall, and you know how are you going to decide which ones to support? And it just seems to me that it opens up a whole Pandora's well, box. Steve, we've already had President set with uh, charitable contributions out of the POA for years. Uh, we, uh, as a group, made donations to the library and made donations to the animal shelter. So those were not amenities either. Um, so the president's already been set. 
this action tonight is not uh, action to determine whether or not the board is going to uh, budget money for charitable contributions. It gives the board the opportunity to utilize strengths of our members in deciding if money is made available, which charity would benefit um, our community. Heaven help us if we have a tornado go through here and the Red Cross comes in um, and they spend a considerable amount of time and effort. Unfortunately, we have a, a number of people in our community that may not be able to support it uh, with a donation. But I think we have a social responsibility in that case to pony up. So we're not saying that we're going to put money in. We're only saying that we're going to put, we want to put, be, to have the freedom to put together a group that can assist us in a time of need if we need that. All right? So it's really more of a formal declaration of what we're already doing. It's a policy. Okay. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, sure, certainly. Uh, Director uh, Stratton would like to respond to uh, some land comments. I, I just want to uh, kind of correct some um, um, statements that are being made about what this discussion. This discussion about selling the land, uh, this board has sat here very soberly and really looked at every aspect of the positives and negatives on this and just make sure that everybody understands a couple of things. One thing, nobody has ever suggested we build an additional golf course on that land. It's nev never been suggested. What we discussed on that was that uh, that land represents all kinds of potential needs or opportunities for our community far into the future, decades uh, into the future potentially, not knowing what we might see. As far as a golf course, the one thing that, that was suggested, that I suggested, is if it just continues to flood our two valley golf courses and gets where, I mean, at some point, if we just can't maintain them anymore, we might make the decision that those two should be closed and do something else with those and build a new very attractive golf course so you replace two with one that would be more attractive that would bring people here. I, and I didn't suggest we do that now. I said that's just something that could happen. Uh, we talked about the fact that we don't have a, uh, we got an aging town center. We've got uh, commercial things that are not as attractive. So we just talked about the, chan the, the idea that we have to realize while it's very attractive to have some money coming in, uh, that takes away needs that we may have you know, very far into the future. And again, as far as Lyndon, I really appreciate your comments on those, and I think a lot of people have the impression that, okay, if we sell this half or third or so of the land, then all of our financial needs are you know, reduced and we don't have to charge people as much anymore. I wish it were that much, but when you're talking about $700,000 in approximately $20 million annual budget, it's just not material enough. It's not going to really change what we have to charge for golf. It's not going to really change what are going to, is going to be needed for assessments far into the future. It would be nice to have some money. We could put some investments in, that sort of thing. So I just want to put it in perspective uh, where the board is sort of split on this, and I uh, was the one for a long time said I can see both sides of it, and I still see boards, both sides of it. It's a very hard decision to say which side is in the best interest of the entire community. But, um, but I do think that everybody should understand that some people, you know, are, are putting forth implications that are not really what the discussion's been. Thanks. Thank you, Director. <clears throat> Mary Shalacy, uh, One Dunedin Place. Um, I want to thank you all as well for serving. It is a thankless job. Been there, done that. Um, and some conversations on Facebook go a little wild and woolly sometimes. And if I've offended anybody, you know, in my comments, I want to apologize. That's not my intention. My intention is to get more knowledge since I just moved here full time. We bought our house three and a half years ago for full time. Um, I also could not find the agenda online or the meeting minutes. And I looked. So that's an issue. I'm pretty savvy. I found last year's, but I couldn't find this year's. So someone could address that issue yeah it's, um, it, if you go to the website it's under about uh, which is uh, on the bottom left and shouldn't it be under meeting minutes and I found we have a lot of headings <laughs> we have we are a large community so we have a lot of so headings it's under about 
It's under a ballot yeah, and then it's under governing under. documents. Well, I also looked under agendas and it didn't come up. The old ones came up, but the new ones on the search button. The old ones came up, but not the new ones. Look on the, under the about uh, okay. and you should find I'll it. Um, I also don't know how this works about making suggestions. Um, everybody's looking for money, looking for money. I'm one of those that wants to save money where we can. Um, and the billing, the monthly billing, everybody knows we owe, owe assessments. And talk was said, well, our members required this billing thing. Well, we get a, an addressed envelope, and I did this once just so I could get the bill. Um, an addressed envelope, a return envelope that is also printed. Um, and all, I, I just think that's a little ridiculous. It wastes a lot of money um, to do that monthly billing. People know they owe it. I never got a bill last year and paid my assessments every month. Write it on my little thing. It's do it the first of the month. As an alternative, because everybody complains but no one has a solution, these little cards were used by the city that I moved from for water billing. They're little postcards. You know, do we all <laughs> we have publishing that I'm not real thrilled about either, but um, something like this might take away all of this because it, it, it would save us money because that's why everyone's looking for money, looking for money, looking for, how about trying to save the money we can? And that's one of my suggestions. Great. Thank you. Mary, thank you for those comments. I, I would point out that um, we used to send little coupons and uh, that didn't work so well, so we are saving some money by not printing out those little coupons anymore. Well, actually, yeah, actually, we are still saving because what, what, what happened operationally is before we sent out the coupons and people still wanted a monthly bill. But, well, I, I, Mary, I can't argue with you about that, but what we're doing is we're talking about people's attitudes and perceptions. And, you know, I can't answer why they, they want a bill, but they want a bill. I think your suggestion is great. I'm sure um, our operational. Um, Staff will take a look at it. Great. Yeah, I know I wrote down Great. some notes, and uh, we'll look into it. Ruth? Don't we also insert insights into that? Yes, we do. Which is valuable. I know it's not valuable well, to everybody. I look at mine every, every, every time. That, that's the water bill. That's right. Well, that's You're the right. water bill. That's the water bill. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. All right, anyone else? Okay. Uh, joint advisory committee reports. We'll begin with our lakes committee. I'm the uh, fill-in lakes guy today. Mr. Doyle couldn't make it today. Uh, lakes committee uh, met uh, yesterday, two days ago, I'm sorry. Uh, the bulk of the meeting was uh, discussion on the uh, block loading fishing dock, and I won't bring that up at all because it's an agenda item today for the board, so we're going to uh, leave that out. Uh, the Lakes Committee and the uh, and the um, Lakes Department started water sampling this month, and that will continue throughout the rest of the uh, rest of the boating season. Uh, and the other one was the uh, was the uh, information that the uh, Fisheries Department uh, managed to purchase 150 thousand. Um, Walleye, and the most the humorous part of the meeting is they came in a plastic bag. <laughs> All 150,000. <laughs> the ones that people are going to go catch tomorrow. <laughs> All right, thank you, John. Recreation. Committee met on April 11th, right here in this room, 
And um, the majority of our conversation revolved around um, Branchwood Phase 2, um, planning and looking at um, how we wanted to move on with the project. Um, phase 1, which is the, the trail and getting it set, is almost complete and should be opened uh, maybe at the end of May, I'm thinking. We're not really exactly sure weather permitting. Um, we also discussed the pickleball court progress at Metfield, which is moving along and, again, um, dependent on the weather. Uh, the gun range, um, we're doing some major renovations and work on the berms there, um, and it will be closed from April 18th to the 30th, again, weather permitting. So I um, want to make a note of that. It's pretty exciting. That was very interesting. I learned more about the gun range. Very, very interesting. Um, the dog park up at Lake Loch Lomond is currently closed um, for the, well, it was the month of March through the end of April. And we considered extending that a little bit longer because we really want the grass to grow in and um, really get a good set so um, we don't have to redo this in, you know, in a, a not so soon anyway. I'm kind of nervous. <laughs> Um, that's it. Committee, uh, we, we, uh, the other thing we did discuss is committee terms um, and some changing on those. So, um, any questions? Okay. And just a brief update on the dog park. Uh, because the, with the help of the rain, it uh, looks very favorable that we will open up on May 1. Thanks. Thank you, Jane. Golf, Jake. My name is Jake Grasmick, Chairman of the Golf Committee. Uh, first of all, I'll review our subcommittee reports. The uh, Greens and Course Committee have been working very hard on, uh, seems like they've been forever, but they're working very hard getting all of our hazards and out of bounds uh, staked out on all the golf courses. And uh, they're working right now evaluating all of our tee boxes going course by course, and I've been with them on a couple of them, evaluating and giving a priority as to which ones need to be leveled or expanded or moved. And we will give that report to Keith in a couple months so he can get it in on his budget for next year. And uh, of course, it won't be all of them. We'll have to take the ones that are the most serious. On the uh, marketing committee, uh, been unfortunate three of our members have had family situations come up in the past month they have not been able to meet and so they apologize but they hope to get back on track uh, very shortly I'm chairman of the junior golf committee and I'm going to hand out some brochures and I'd like to have you follow along with them these are hot off the press uh, just came out this week Of course, the purpose of the Junior Golf Committee is to try to expand our golfing uh, in the village and get as many young people involved in golf as we can. And one of the ways we thought would be to come up with a clinic. And the clinic, we're going to offer them from ages 6 through 17, July 4th through the 25th, July 9th through the 30th, August 6th through the 27th. They will be held every Saturday morning from 8 a.m. to 10 a.m. at the Highlands Driving Range. And the reason why we selected Highlands is that it provides a great golf instruction platform with a putting green, a chipping green, a practice bunker, and grass lesson tee. And on the first three Saturdays, we'll focus on the fundamentals of golf, swing, and finer points of golf. Uh, Darrell Muldoon will be heading up this uh, staff, and we have several of the staff he has lined up, and we have six to seven volunteers that have given, have had experience giving golf lessons. So we've got plenty of our bases covered as far as instruction is concerned. Then on the fourth Saturday, they're going to have a nine hole, or the fourth lesson, a nine hole golf tournament play, and they're encouraging the parents to go along with the junior golfers and help them uh, 
caddy. So this, the brochures are being handed out to the local schools, being distributed around the golf courses, and we're hoping this will be a successful experience. Also, uh, the committees, uh, in the past month, we've had numerous volunteers helping the maintenance crews get all of the landscaping projects all cleaned up, pruned, and uh, with mulch and uh, friends of the Highlands, lads and lassie of Scottsdale, Bill Davis over at Dogwood. I've had several volunteers here, and uh, I think you can see the results around. Uh, uh, Reed's assistant, Wendy, over at uh, Burksdale and at Kingsland. She does an excellent job keeping their landscaping uh, in focus. I know that people say, well, the only important things are the tees and fairways and greens, but it doesn't help to have a little bit of, of uh, the landscaping done as in your uh, marketing is concerned and the realtors, why a little curb appeal doesn't hurt anything, I don't think. And I would suggest, if, even if you're not a golfer, we've got some areas on our golf courses if you want to take a look and take some photographs, go to number 19 box at Highlands. Go to number 18 at Dogwood. Uh, go to the practice green out here and look back up towards the clubhouse. Go down to the number two waterfall. Go on number two tee box at Burksdale and look down through the valley. And if you're not a golfer and if you don't enjoy this, there's something wrong, people. I'd like to thank all those volunteers for the help. So if you have any questions. Great report. Thank you. I was wondering if you would cover uh, the, the promotion we had, the $25 promotion and so on. Uh, we ran a promotion, uh, and it was for uh, uh, golf after 2.30 uh, for $25 for the first player and $20 for the second player. Uh, friends and family, and you had to sign up and give us your email address. We promoted it via email only, uh, which didn't cost us anything in advertising other than the uh, labor to put the information together. We did, uh, if my memory serves me correctly, 348 rounds in that period, which amounted to $7,000 in revenue. And it cost us nothing. To cost us promote. nothing. It didn't cost us a thing to promote it. Is that correct? Any round of golf in the afternoon is... Good also, money. we've been approved to be a participant in the Natural States Golf Trail, which we will be having a sign put up on both ends of Bella Vista, which will give us some free advertising. Uh, not free as we had to pay for it, but, but affordable. <laughs> I might add that the board uh, received an email from Steve McGee outlining an increase in golf rounds uh, in 2015 from 2014, and particularly the increase in uh, junior golfers and the interest associated with that. So, um, Steve, thanks for forwarding that on. Great information. And uh, as you can see, we're uh, moving in a direction I think is going to benefit all of us in the future. Elections, Mr. Judson. A buddy called me at the last minute and asked me to fill in for him. He had to go out of town at the last minute unannounced, uh, unexpectedly. Uh, as of 421, uh, the number of paper ballots submitted so far is 2,604. Number of online ballots, and this is for the first time ever, 1,223 for a total count of 3,827 which represent a, represents a 14% participation, still early in the election, uh, but do recall that uh, last year the total participation was 23%, and we're picking up at this point about 3 to 4% per day. What we're also doing since the first time we're doing uh, this new method, uh, we're tracking the amount that we receive on a daily basis, so next year we can use it for comparative purposes and see how we're trending. Uh, but please note, he has a big note here that he wants me to make sure that I read. Please note, while we can see the number of ballots cast, 
we are unable to see how they are voted. So we don't know how they voted, we just know that people can't have voted. Also, he wants to point out and thank the volunteers. Uh, the volunteers uh, which are trying to uh, get out the vote um, have made over 500 calls. Um, and uh, the additional last piece of information, um, uh, the estimated or the actual cost for our initial printing uh, and mailing uh, came in under budget by 4,471. Now keep in mind that we still have uh, the undetermined uh, amount of postage at the end of uh, the election, uh, but right now we're trending uh, about $4,500 under our anticipated expenditure. And uh, the last piece of information on the bottom, and he put this in big bold print, make sure you vote. Thank you, Tom. Audit committee? Uh, I've got a brief report. Brad uh, uh, is not here tonight. He's the chairman of our audit committee. And also Josh isn't here, and he's also a member of the audit committee. But the audit has been finished. Uh, the BKD finished the audit for 2015. And it is available today on the POA website if you want to see it. it it's there. They said it was posted. And the auditors again issued us a clean or a favorable opinion. Uh, and that has been for several years they've done that. The auditors did additional testing this year in reviewing some internal controls in areas that had pointed out needed strengthening. And management has developed a plan to fix those areas. Some fixes were implemented immediately. And some will be addressed in conjunction with our present upgrade of our accounting and water software that is going on presently. And just to give you an example of what some of those areas would be, uh, a more complex software password forced to change every 90 days and just reviewing internal software audit logs for management periodically. Thank you. Um, while we're on the subject of favorable, I do want to make a comment about some Facebook um, discussion about We Are Bella Vista. And I want to assure all of our members on watching on our Technicolor TVs tonight that uh, that publication is self-sustaining. Uh, sustaining. So every bit of advertising dollar that we collect pays for every bit of part of getting that publication out to people. It's a fantastic uh, upgrade compared to what we used to have. And uh, I look forward to seeing uh, more and brighter articles in it. Stacy, thank you to your group. Old business. Uh, board members, if you turn to uh, page 58 in your packet, uh, policy 1.03.6, uh, the creation of a charitable giving committee to evaluate charitable requests and determine which charities, if any, will be given a donation by the POA. This would be the second and final reading. Any discussion? Being none. Someone would like to make a motion? Make a motion that we approve the Approve the uh, formation of a charitable giving committee to uh, advise the board with regard to charities in the Bella Vista community. Second. Second. Any more discussion? Um, just as a clarification to the uh, audience, um, the wording of my motion was specifically designating that any charities to be considered would be those within our community. And so uh, we are coming to the assistant. We, we expect that if we do allocate funds for these charitable gifts, that that money is going back into our community to help ourselves, our members. All in favor? Any opposed? On page 60 of your packet, policy 1.03.7, 
the creation of a resource and advisory committee which will serve the board as an added resource and offer advice for special projects. The committee will also handle all member disciplinary issues. This would be the second and final reading. I move that we make approve the policy 1.03.7 to create resource and advisory committee to report to the board. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Unanimous. On page 62 of your packet, policy 1.04, improvements to the policy to ensure it is in compliance with the rest of the governing documents. This would be the second and final reading. Anyone have a motion to uh, move we accept the changes to the policy 1.04 as recommended by the Rules and Regulations Committee? <clears throat> Second. Any discussion? <coughs> All in favor? Any opposed? On page 70 of your packet, bylaw article 2, section 1C, and bylaw article 7, section 1C, adjustments to ensure the bylaws are in compliance with state law. This would be the second and final reading. I move that we uh, approve the uh, policy as submitted by the Rules and Regulations Committee to get our bylaws in uh, line with state laws. This is specific to bylaw Article 2, Section 1C, and bylaw Article 7, Section 1B, both. Correct? Correct. Okay. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Passes unanimously. On page 72 of your packet, offer for the purchase of approximately 144 acres of ARCMO land. So that we can have a discussion, because I'm sure there probably will be one that starts. Um, I, I have, this is a long motion, uh, I have one objection to this this uh, proposal. So I'm going to make a motion that we offer to sell the ARCMO land for 700000 dollars $725,000. Is that for the 144 acres? For the 144 acres. Is there a second on that motion? Sell the ARCMO property for 140. 144 I'll, acres for 725,000. I'll second that. I'll second that. Any discussion? Uh, the, the question I have is that um, I know, Dwayne, that there was a, a down payment for the purchase of that land uh, by or in u using POA funds that to pay off a note, uh, the golf community paid a sub charge or an up charge for five years to pay that off. Is that correct? Do you know the amount of money that uh, was raised with that sub charge or, or whatever you call it, markup, surcharge, thank you. Um, certainly from my perspective in order to uh, consider this I would I would like to see that those funds uh, that were raised by the golf community be returned to the golf operations keeping in uh, in uh, mind that uh, our community has said that user fees should be 
paying for users uses um, so uh, seems only fair that if the users helped buy the land the users should at least be paid back for their uh, contribution uh, that's a, a very good and noble idea also because we did remember we're only selling approximately a third of the land not not all but we don't know what the final number will be when it's all by back I, exactly my concern is not for selling of the land my concern is for selling at this time we have not had a long-range plan for Bella Vista and we plan to put one in effect before the end of the year if possible and I truly believe that we need to see what the long-range plan holds for us before we go ahead and sell this because once it's sold it kind of determines what we can do on a long-range plan and it would limit it but I would like to leave that open until after that time I'm, I'm again as before a bird in the hand kind of guy on this one um, I think it's more than a fair price uh, what they have offered uh, I think the POA uh, has plenty on its plate right now and, and will for years uh, I am certainly not opposed to a long range plan and believe we need it uh, I don't know that uh, 144 acres uh, would have uh, a substantial impact on that long-range plan. Good, but I don't know that. I do know now that uh, we could use these monies. Uh, I don't think we should necessarily uh, uh, tag them for golf operations. I think that they should go into the general fund of the POA for the use of uh, whatever, and uh, uh, certainly Again, we've got projects that we're looking at uh, and uh, pieces of property that badly need updating. Thank you. Any further discussion? Um, I should, uh, I would like to weigh in a bit. Um, at our last meeting, I uh, indicated that I was um, still, uh, had not made a, a decision as to which side do I, I would come down on this. Um, like Ruth, I am concerned that we would be making a decision um, based upon what seems to be a good and fair price, um, a good amount of money that could be utilized by the community. But the fact that that decision is made outside of any context for a strategic plan does not seem to be wise. Uh, I know of few ways in which we could, I don't know of any ways in which we could use that property right now in total. I don't know any way that we can use 144 acres. I don't know any way that if we sold 144 acres the remaining amount of land that we would have would prohibit us from doing things that could be part of a strategic plan. I would hope that um, we will arrive at a strategic plan expeditiously. And I have been told by Tom that we, we, we are targeting the, the end of the year, uh, if that's correct, Tom. That's correct. The first of the year we'd be done. I would end of this year, first of the year, next year. Okay. Um, there may be a time where if, let's say come October or so, that nothing has surfaced that would indicate we would use that property, that whole property, uh, that even in October we could say, we do not project strategic plan will contain any utilization of the ARCMO land. We could free up that land at that time for sale if the, buy, if the current bidders still have an interest. Uh, and, and so I, I support 
Ruth's contention, Ruth's perspective, that um, although it seems like a, a very good deal of money, that without planning, uh, we might be rushing into a decision. Ron? Let's, let's make sure we make the decisions based on the right information, and I'm going to argue a little bit against the, the conclusion I came to, but I can't imagine that we would have a strategic plan in this calendar year that would specify how we're going to use the Artmore land. Is that a reasonable conclusion? So any, any decision uh, about that would have to be kind of on faith that to say, does it make sense that this is an asset that we may find to use in a very large scale, very, you know, very ambitious kind of a, uh, a plan, long range for Bella Vista. You know, I think what we might do for this year is going to be strategic plans <clears throat> focused on uh, our existing amenities and structures, et cetera. Would you agree with that, Tom and Bob? So, you know, I don't think we're going to, you know, by the end of the year be able to say, yeah, this is what we would be using with the land for. My understanding of a, str of a strategic plan would be one that, uh, that tried to look into uh, a five-year period in some detail, but also might have a 10-year horizon with some more wide open planning. Uh, with that in mind, if we can't foresee uh, 10 years down the road, uh, I, yeah, I just don't, it doesn't bother me. We have to look beyond that. Further discussion? So the motion on the table was submitted by Mr. Nettle. I'll, I'll re restate it. Um, he suggested in his motion to submit a counteroffer of, of $725,000 uh, as a purchase price, counteroffer purchase price for the 144 acres. I'll call for a vote. All in favor of that motion? Four individuals, all imposed? Four individuals, the motion fails. New business. On page uh, 78 of your packet, uh, policy 3.09, this adjustment to the policy would change the threshold as to when the water service is suspended from $200, approximately eight months, to 60 days past due on assessments. This would be the first reading. I have a motion? I move we adopt uh, the changes to policy 3, uh, 7. Dot, which one? 3.09. Second. Any discussion? My understanding, this is in line with most other businesses. Absolutely. And uh, I want to point out uh, that since this is a change, you'll notice in the provision that uh, we are going to give um, all the way until, so if a, um, Bottom of page 79, you'll see uh, revised policy 3.09 will go into effect for members, uh, member assessment accounts 60 days or more past due, yet under $200 past due as of January 1, 2017. Effectively, this will give anybody that, it, that would, uh, on the passing of this motion, uh, on the passing of this revised policy, would give them time to uh, uh, catch up. Uh, as opposed to changing it and then immediately having a large quantity of people to uh, go from being in a, an acceptable state to an unacceptable state. Uh, Tom, would you also explain the provisions in there about uh, payment programs and the things that will that could, that could delay that process for people? Yeah, we, we work as much as possible with our property owners uh, that are struggling and uh, uh, we put them 
work with them and uh, enter and the, put them on uh, creative payment plans. And as long as they're on a creative play, payment plan and making effort towards paying, uh, we won't shut off the water. Uh, it's uh, but once again, it, um, when people have not paid for eight straight months, it's really really challenging to get them back on track. Uh, it's much easier to catch them early. All in favor of uh, accepting policy 3.09 on first reading? Any opposed? Motion carries. On page 81 of your packet, policy 7.05, uh, this, this adjustment to the policy would clarify the distinction between fees requiring prior approval by the board of directors and special promotional rates and other fees not requiring prior approval by the board of directors. This would be the first reading. Move we accept uh, the uh, policy 7.05. Yes, Second. Any discussion? Call for a vote on accepting policy 7.05 as written. All in favor? Any opposed? On page 84, you'll see the, the uh, original proposal uh, regarding the Loch Lomond uh, fishing dock, and there has been some uh, updated information that we re have received, uh, some of it as uh, early as today, or as late as today. Uh, first of all, we have confirmation from the fly tires that they are um, uh, going to contribute $10,000, um, 1,800 of that will go to uh, uh, fish habitat and the rest to offset the cost. Also on the plan uh, at our last board meeting, the question was asked, um, uh, if you look at the map on uh, 87, you'll see the proposed location for the picnic area. Uh, we had our uh, MAC division go out and research that. Um, while it is possible to put a uh, park, park in that area, because of the uh, steepness of the terrain and drainage issues in that area, the cost of that small little park would be $8,650. Um, in management's opinion, that's fairly expensive for a small area. Uh, now, the park did include uh, some picnic tables, a barbecue grill, uh, mulch uh, to cover the ground and so forth, but it's still fairly, if you look at um, cost per square foot, it's, it's pretty costly. And that's just because of the terrain and, and the drainage issue. Um, uh, if the board were to go ahead and approve the $30,288, uh, that includes the contribution uh, from, the, from the fly tires, uh, and management recommends that we uh, begin construction as soon as reasonably possible. If the board is, still feels that it, it makes sense to uh, uh, add the picnic area and the tables and the barbecue and so forth, the total cost would uh, go up to $38,938. But we're voting on the $30,000 uh, option? It depends upon the motion made by the board. Uh, well, I, I made a comment before when we discussed it, and I'll make the same comment, and that is, that, you know, the lakes are uh, an amenity for everybody in Bella Vista, but fact is unless uh, you live on the lake or have a boat uh, you have quite limited access to be able to use the lake so anything we can do to enhance that um, to allow people to uh, uh, have access to the lake I would definitely be in favor of um, I wonder if uh, we can look Tom into other ways that does sound expensive for that little bit of land but I was just thinking if there's a nice place where in addition to just the fishing that it's a you know, picnic or access type area for families to be at while they're fishing. Is there another way to do that in that space that we have? We looked we at moving it down it. further, um, and it would be more cost effective. Um, uh, Mike said it would be a couple thousand dollars simply because uh, in that case you're not dealing with the drainage issues. But our concern is that the, that would be, it would be detached and separated from the main <coughs> area, uh, and it would, we would, it would lose the effect of what, what that, the intended draw of that. Um, and so we, we looked at that option. Um, we looked at the cost of that, and we just, um, 
you know, the, the options are available. You know, we want to give the board the options that they asked, the information that the board had asked for, uh, but we're just concerned about the additional cost. I mean, it's almost increasing it uh, by 30% um, uh, for a couple of picnic tables. So we just, we're just concerned that that would be management is fully in support of uh, doing all the dock work, uh, but we're hesitant on uh, the park. Would the terrain cause a safety issue? We would have to uh, remediate it so it wouldn't be a safety issue. I mean, you can't put a park bench on the side of a hill. I understand. And what about the dock itself, the first part of the dock over the water? Could you modify it to, to make that larger and give access to the walkway going out to the main part of the dock where you sort of have... Um, that was not contemplated. Um, uh, I would have to think it would be fairly costly because uh, you're talking about additional dock space and whether we could get seating or something to that nature. Uh, I mean, that would we would have to reassess. Um, uh, but I have a feeling uh, it would be costly. Well, I, I would make a motion that we approve what you uh, have suggested that we do, and that um, we'd ask management to continue to look at it and, and see if there are ways to just enhance it as much as possible for the enjoyment as many people. So that's, that's uh, within a reasonable cost. Just to confirm what you're saying is the 30288 Right. Yes. I'll, I'll second that motion. And as part of my second, I would like to thank the Fly Tires for their generous contribution to this project. Uh, it's nice to have people like that in the village that, that support things that are good for everybody. And, I know there are several members of the fly tires here. Gentlemen, thank you very much. And ladies, thank you very much. Not, and not, not just this project, but just about every project that comes before this board. If it's close to the water, they're tied to yeah, it. <laughs> that's right. Just to restate the motion, um, is to approve the Loch Lomond Fishing Dock Project based on the $30,288 budget. Is that correct, Ron? Yes. And that was seconded by John. And to move forward uh, within a reasonable amount of time. And to re move forward. Any other discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? And just one additional clarification uh, from the uh, uh, email that I received from the fly tires is that uh, the fly tires would reimburse us at the end of the project. Um, on page 89 of your uh, packet, you, uh, this is a um, where am I? Uh, this is a board resolution granting the president, uh, myself, and the secretary, uh, Genevieve, the authority to execute warranty deeds, promissory note. These, this has to do with uh, the selling of lots. Entertain a motion to accept this uh, board resolution, POA 2016-02. So move. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Any opposed? Motion passes. When you came in, there was a uh, walk-in uh, document. Uh, this regards, and what I did was I gave you a copy of an email that I sent to the chairman. Um, and um, uh, we've been going through, Dwayne and I have been going through and working with the management team and uh, to clearing out older projects and making sure that they're started and completed. Uh, one of which uh, we have a cash reserve of $100,000 for cart paths. Uh, this is dating back to uh, March of 2015. Keith approached me and he would like to utilize all of these funds uh, and uh, put them towards cart paths. Uh, at Scottsdale. He named Scottsdale simply because with the closure coming up, um, uh, there would be no disruption in play because the golf course would be closed. Um, he does not anticipate he will be able to complete all of the work. So uh, he does not anticipate it would, what would it would be is we would spend up to but not exceed that $100,000 and we are seeking approval uh, for that, uh, for the creation of this project. Just for clarification, that's already been set aside. Does that require board action? Because it's not the allocation of new funds. It's simply to give you the go-ahead to use yeah. them. If, if, if there's a contractor involved over the $10,000 threshold, then we have to approve it. So I, I 
guess I, I was misunderstanding. I thought, um, I assumed, I should have said a misunderstanding. I assumed that that would be done by Mac. Who's going to complete the work? But it, so that, that, although that that money was not approved before, it was approved. It was approved. So it's it was sitting approved, in the budget, it just hasn't okay. been used. But but we should not have any. Once it's approved and go is budgeted, then uh, to, to say that we have to then. Reapprove it doesn't make much sense to me. But it was approved for flood damage repairs, and so we can't assume that that at least some portion of the paths were flood damage. They were. So then, why not? I'm just. I, uh, why not? I don't, I don't why not? Indeed, I, I I move that we uh, approve this. I'll second that motion. Ron moves to uh, approve the allocation of $100,000 for CART paths and seconded by John. Any further discussion? Bruce? I just want to throw in, you know, if, if we're dedicating this, Scott, and I support it fully, dedicating this to Scottsdale, that's great. Uh, but what about the highlands? Uh, what about, uh, <laughs> and I don't, you know, at this point, I don't even care about They're actually the golf committee, um, Jake alluded to earlier, is in the process of identifying and prioritizing recommendations for the re replacement of cart paths at those two courses and across the village replacing tee boxes that have been, so that we can include them in the budget for next year. Yeah. Cart paths are pretty easy to identify. Yeah. Well, <laughs> I understand, but. Okay. And, well, and cost it out because you have to measure out the linear right. footage of, uh, of how much we're talking about. I could add one more thing. Uh, I don't want to impede you, Tom, making decisions to to utilize funds that have been budgeted. I don't you know, disagree, but and, I always think it's. That, I also think it's. In it, I think it's good that management uh, keeps the board informed of um, actions that we're taking, and uh, these conversations have been taking place uh, only over about a week's period, so there's been no delay. But we just feel it's prudent that we inform to keep the board informed. I, I agree wholeheartedly with that, that we should be kept informed. But I don't think that there's any need for us to, 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 to make a motion to you know, do anything. You've done your due diligence. You've done your duty. Go to it. <laughs> All right. There's a motion on the table uh, submitted by Ron and seconded by John. All in favor? Any opposed? Okay. Motion Brad passes. Brad did not know about this. So okay. He's going to abstain. Motion passes. One abstention. <laughs> I can't. All right. Thank you, everyone, for attending tonight. Um, the next uh, COO board meeting will be Thursday, May 5th. 2016 at 2.30 here in the Country Club board meeting room. This will be a closed discussion meeting. The next board of directors work session will be Thursday, May 12, 2016, 8 a.m. in the Country Club board meeting room. The annual meeting will be Tuesday, May 17, 2016, 6.30 p.m. at Reardon Hall. Board of directors regular meeting will be Thursday, May 19, 6.30 in the Country Club boarding board meeting room. And next Tuesday, we will have a joint town hall meeting with uh, our mayor. That will be held at Reardon Hall at 6.30? 6 o'clock. Next, Next Tuesday. Tuesday. And forecast is for sunny skies here in Bella Vista. Where's your...